Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com and this is our next Saturday with Stacy YouTube class number 493, counting down to 500. Yay! Not just yay about the 500, but yay! SMS girl Elena is back. She's been gone for two months. <laughs> Over two months. Two months? Oh! <gasps> We missed her. So I am excited. Look at, wait a minute, look at what's back. Winner, winner, chicken dinner forms. <laughs> that also means if you follow us on Facebook, some of you have been asking, hey, when are you gonna announce the winner winners on Facebook? It's like, <laughs> we aren't, in, We I, I, I just couldn't. I had so much to do with her being gone because she and I really load the product and I mean, we're, we're, we're a teammates and she did as much as she could while she was away, but holy smokes artichokes. I'm so glad she's back. So anyway, I could pick the winners, but I never had time to like list them out so I could announce them. So we were just putting $25 gift cards in everybody's account and we would get these emails. I must have been a winner winner. I logged in today and there was $25. <laughs> Yes, yes you were. But now that Elena's back, I can get back to, to announcing them on Facebook. That makes my heart happy. <laughs> I'm so glad she's home. Now, today, what do I have for you today besides actual winner winner chicken dinner forms? I have new product from Spellbinders. I have two, two of their most current collections. One of them is called Stylish Ovals and the other one is called Seahorse Kisses. I love Seahorse Kisses. Beautiful. Beautiful. So I saw the product and I'm like, ooh, I like this product. And I was talking with them about it and they're showing me and this is how we would, you know, this is how you use this and this is how you use that. And I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Sure it is. I saw something totally different. <laughs> I looked at it and I go, hmm. <laughs> that's, I think that's one of the things that manufacturers love and hate about me is that, you know, they, they want to show their product in the intended way it's meant to be shown, but then they also want somebody to show it in a way that is unique or maybe they hadn't thought of or gives you another opportunity to use that product. If you can buy one die and you can use it 15 different ways that's a value right so when i looked at some of their product i'm like oh i have thoughts <laughs> and that's what we're gonna do today yes they will have amazing videos on how to use the product in the exact way it was intended i'm not gonna do that <laughs> hi hi spellbinders <laughs> and i'm going to incorporate in a lot of product that you probably already have in your crafty stash. I've got Hero Arts inks, so whatever dye-based inks you have is gonna work. I've got Pearl X with me, so if you've got Pearl X, if you've got Perfect Pearl, if you've got Ozzy Andrews, Micahs, any of them will do. Pearl X is a little different, but I'll explain that to you. I've got Luster Wax again. You're like, you just showed Luster Wax. I know, but now I'm gonna show it in another different way. Isn't that good? <laughs> when you can take one product and use it this way, and then this way, and then this way, and then that way, you feel, you feel really good about using that product, like you, your money was well spent. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping to make that happen for you today, all while showing you some of the latest and greatest from Spellbinders. Now, winner, winner, chicken dinner, are we ready? I miss the, everybody missed Elena here. She, she's just, she's, she's such a special and amazing SMS girl that, um, that when, when she came back, we were like, <laughs> yay, <laughs> especially me. Cause Elena and I sit right next to each other and we can almost talk without saying anything because we work on the same things together. And, um, and I had, I had nobody right there next to me, <laughs> but now I do. So, all right, our first winner, winner chicken dinner, which I didn't get to announce on the last YouTube because James and I didn't get it done. SMS guy, James, he's my eldest son. 
<laughs> Our first winner winner is so on 491, which was March 4th, it is Kelly Seaver. Hello, Kelly Seaver. You are a winner winner chicken dinner. How are you doing? I bet you're on live chat. If you're not on live chat now, I'm guessing you're gonna be on live chat soon. Congratulations, Kelly. And I get to I get to hold your name up. But you're not alone. There's always two of you that get a $25 uh, gift card to SMS. Andrea, Andrea McClelland. Andrea McClelland, is that close? Am I close, Andrea? Andrea McClelland, congratulations, you're a winner, winner, chicken dinner here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, and there is a $25 gift card already in your online account. How do I know? She checkmarked it. <laughs> okay, our next winner winners from 492 are Sandra. Sandra Hattenauer, hello, Sandra. Well done, you, congratulations. It is your turn to be a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yay for Sandra, and I hope I spelled their pronounced Hattenauer. I'm hoping I spelled that close, or pronounced that closely. And our last winner winner is Cheryl. Cheryl Willis, hello Cheryl. Congratulations, you also are a winner winner chicken dinner here at Scrapbooking Made Simple. And yes, the check mark is already done. Your money is already in your online account. So I have Cheryl, I have Sandra, I have Andrea, and I have Kelly. Oh, that's a lot of you. <laughs> Who's gonna go shopping first? <laughs> what you gonna buy? <laughs> Let's do the winner winner chicken dinner dance for all four of you. And I expect that all four of you are going to stand up and do it, or you're gonna rock it out wherever you're sitting, okay? Ready? You're a winner, chicken dinner. You're a winner. Chicken dinner, wahoo, kachu, for you. Congratulations to the four of you. I hope you enjoy your winnings. And um, isn't it exciting that they're on purple paper in Elena's back? <laughs> that means I can start posting or, or showing the winners on Facebook again. Oh my gosh, James and I, we did our best. For two months, we, we, we swung for the fences. Sometimes we got everything done in time and sometimes we didn't, but it wasn't for lack of trying. So we're now, thankfully we're now only down two people. We're back to just being shorthanded two people. Gonna keep, <laughs> keep going and hopefully everybody comes back full healthy. It is what it is. <laughs> All right, so for today, what do I have for you today? Like I said, I saw this and, and maybe took it in a way that spellbinders hadn't necessarily intended. They may have already thought of this all on their own, but didn't tell me. Thank you for not bursting my bubble, spellbinders. I really appreciate that. And I really wanted to pull out product that I thought you would have either the exact same product or something similar to by another manufacturer so that you are getting the most out of what it is you've purchased. That's so important. Keeping crafting affordable and using what you got. Ooh, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna tilt down. Oh, I already put my samples away. I'm gonna tilt down and I'm gonna show you a couple samples and then we're gonna get started. And I'm gonna go here, here, and then I'm gonna go here, and I'm gonna go here, and then I'm gonna go there. And there may be a little overlapping in between, kind of like, it's like a smooth transition. <laughs> I'm gonna try and make a smooth transition between each technique. And for those of you who are new to crafting, this would be a good class for you to watch if you've not seen a die cutting machine or something along, you know, dies are, dies are, are um, you know, they're, they're kind of intimidating sometimes, maybe. A die cutting machine can be intimidating sometimes. You get your first die cutting machine and you put your die in it and you send it through and you hear that creak and the first thing you're like is like, oh. I know, we get the phone calls. Right in the middle of somebody cutting something, they'll stop and call us and say, I think I've ruined my machine. And like, no, no, you're good, keep going. So not only is a die cutting machine amazing, but then figuring out how to use it with, with manufacturers' products in ways that, that the, maybe are a little different than even what the, what the manufacturer of the die cutting machine had intended. 
In fact, I'm pretty sure because I'm using a, well, I'll, I'll get there. Okay, we're gonna tilt down. We're gonna get started for today. I'm gonna show you some samples. It is St. Patrick's Day today here, 2023, and we will be live chatting. So if you see the live chat over here on the side, don't forget to subscribe. There's a heart with an SMS. Subscribe to our channel and then join, also join the live chat and say hello, hello. We will say hello, hello back to you. All of you newbies who are joining me, welcome. This is going to be fun, fun, I promise you. Okay, then we go, bye. Zoom on in, zoom, 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 zoom. And zoom, 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 and down. See, I got my green shirt on, I got my green sweater on. Okay, so, a couple samples just to give you an idea. Collection is really pretty. Just beautiful. One. Then our next sample. Two. Isn't that pretty? And then the last sample. Three. See, told you, two totally different collections. And I'm going to play between both of them today. I'm going to go back and forth between both of them. The first collection is called Seahorse Kisses. It is by a company, a little mom and pop like we are. I believe the name of the company is W Plus 9. Now you can go Google them. And I think she has a little store online just like us. She's just a little, a little mom and pop. But, and her name is, is it Donna? No, Dawn. Hello, Dawn. I love your collection, Dawn. Well done. Oh my gosh, fabulous. So collection number one is Seahorse Kisses. And then collection number two is called Stylish Ovals. Stylish Ovals. So I am gonna play between the two of them today. And I think I need to talk to you a little bit more. So you can see how this is going to take all day to get this done. Um, let me put that there. And let me put this here. So let me go back. It's like, wait, you just talked to us. I know, but I, I have to talk to you again. I have to look at you. It's a thing. I'm sorry. Okay, so. Both of these collections have dies, yes, and they have stamps, yes, but they also have glimmer plates. And one of them has a piercing plate. The Stylish Ovals has a piercing plate. So it's the glimmer plates and the piercing plates that I'm going to be playing with today. I'm not going to get into just the basic die cutting and things like that. I'm going to play with the piercing plate and the glimmer plates. Glimmer plates are meant to go with a hot foil machine, whether it be the Gemini machine that was out, the Go Press and Foil machine that was out, or the Spellbinders Glimmer machine, which is currently available. And these are machines that allow you to take a hot foil plate, add some inexpensive foil, run it through your, your Big Shot machine or your Platinum machine, and transfer that foil onto paper to give an amazing look. I mean, like, beautiful. Like, you go and you look at cards in really nice, uh, card shops like papyrus or whatever and and the, the they're beautiful that's what foil plates do they transfer foil hot foil onto paper and make things beautiful now I had hot foil plates years ago I was Couture Creations and I were really the first ones out there to do them and now they've become obviously much, much more popular and I had stopped doing hot foil plates. Who knew? I was a little bit ahead of the trend. But I want to take these glimmer plates and I'm not going to use a glimmer machine or a go press and foil or a Gemini machine. I'm just going to use my Sizzix Big Shot machine and that's it. And I'm going to take these plates and I'm going to transform them into something that I they weren't necessarily intended to be, but doesn't mean they can't be. Like I said, options. We are all about the options and you have options with these plates. So I'm going to tilt down and we're going to get started. Like I said, I'm going to start 
I'm going to start in one direction and then we're going to pivot and pivot and pivot. So I hope you stay with me and I hope you either take down notes, my pause face if you want to write notes. Here's my pause face, that way I don't blink. <laughs> Or you can write down this YouTube number, whatever it is that will allow you to refer back to it again and again and again. Because this is going to work no matter whose hot foil plates you have, whether they be my older ones or Spellbinders or whomever else is making hot foil plates on the market now. All right, let's get started for today. Sorry, just I can't not, I, I, I just feel awkward not looking at you. I, I mean, I know in my head, I know you're not sitting in front of me, but really, are you not sitting in front of me? Hmm. Feels like you are. <laughs> okay, so let's get started for today. And I'm going to start with their piercing plate. So this is the new Spellbinders piercing plate. It's part of the Stylish Ovals collection. It looks like this. So not only does it pierce, but it will die cut out little bits and pieces. And I suppose I can die cut one for you pretty quickly, just so you can see. I'm gonna tell you it is very intricate. Do you see how intricate it is? And it does have cut lines so that the ovals will come out. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab my precision base plate because this is absolutely positively going to be needed. Let me move this over here. I'm gonna bring over my Sizzix Big Shot machine because that's our machine of choice here at Scrapbooking Made Simple. Let me zoom back just a little bit. This is the manual machine, so it's got a hand crank. We sell the, we sell the switch. We have the exclusive on the Sorbet switch here in the United States. We sell the hand crank and we've got like an amazing value for a starter kit if you are looking for a die cutting machine. So I'm gonna take my precision base plate, which is required for something of this kind of intricacy. I mean, there's a lot of little, la, oh yeah. Is that a good image? Did I get it at the right angle? You'll have to tell me, because I can't tell. <laughs> I don't have like a computer set up next to me where I can see where I'm doing. I've got a little two by two screen. <laughs> okay, so that's a very intricate uh, plate. Now, your machine's going to come with a base plate. It's going to come with a solo shim that allows you to do wafer dies. This is very wafer. And typically, you would just sandwich this with some paper. Typically, you would just sandwich this with some paper in between two Sizzix cutting pads, put it on your machine, and roll it through. But if I do that, let me tell you, And I'll even do a rotate. I'll even do a rotate. So I don't need that anymore. I can get rid of, well, see, and get rid of that. And I'm even going to rotate this a little bit and send it on back. No precision base plate. So let me tell you. It ain't gonna cut. <laughs> I mean, it just isn't. Nothing's gonna fall out because this is too intricate. If you have a brand new machine, you may find that it works fine. But with an older machine like mine, mine is old and loved and used and, and worn and it's loosened up over the years. Not in a bad way. It just, you know, it just, the, 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 the roller got a little looser as time went on. No judgments on my machine. So let me take a piece of paper. And this time, this time I'm going to add, oh, let me put my solo shim back on. I'm going to keep my platform, my solo shim, and this time I'm going to add my precision base plate. Super important if you're doing anything that's intricate. It really is. This is going to allow that die to bite into the paper a little bit better, really forcing that cut. All right, so let me send this on through. 
so I didn't use a bottom plate at all. I substituted that precision base plate for my bottom clear pad. So again, the sandwich is a your base plate, your solo shim, your precision base plate in lieu of a cut plate, and then a do not cut plate right on top. And a do not cut plate is just a plate that you try not to cut into too often because it stays nice and flat. So this I'm gonna roll on through. And I'm gonna do another rotate, but I just don't need all this extra paper. So I'm gonna rotate it. And let's see if we're able to get a better, send it on through. Now your machine may be loose like mine, again, no judgment. And if it is, you may need to send it back. I'm not, mine doesn't need it, but send it back one more time just so you know. Every machine is gonna be different. They're all not gonna behave the same. Depends upon how much you use them. All right, so let's just go over and We'll pop this out now. Okay, so now, now I've got it cut. And it's got little, little holes. Ooh, see, wait a minute. Little holes along the edges. So it is a piercing plate. So not everything is supposed to pop out. It's supposed to leave that pierced look into it like you just spent hours and hours and hours doing that piercing. Nobody needs to know it took you five minutes, not even that, rolling it through your Big Shot machine. So all my little, all my little pieces here. So there's lots of little areas where the dye will come out, where there's little pieces that do pop right out. Look at my little corners just fall right out. That's a happy day. My little corners fall right out. And it's a beautifully detailed plate. But this would not happen without that precision base plate. So I didn't do all of it, but you can see. I'm hoping you can see the detail in there. So pretty. And then you've got the center piece as well. And those little pieces pop out too. And you just go in and start moving them out. And that will fit in there. So that's how this plate was originally intended to be used. And I have beautiful samples on how that looks when it's completely done. I want to take it and kind of flip it on its ear just a little bit. Okay, so let me grab. Let's make sure my little pieces are out. So I'm going to be using, I'm not going to need to use my precision base plate for the rest of the day because I'm not going to be cutting. So I can put that precision base plate away. What I am going to need you to have though to make all of this work is something called a thud pad. A thud pad. This is from Sizzix. I actually have two of them here. One of them I've got luster wax all over, but that's okay. It still works fine. This is a thud pad from Sizzix. It's not called a thud pad. They don't particularly care for the fact that I came up with a different name. It is called a crease pad, a standard crease pad. And what does this do? Well, you needed this when there were steel rule dies, steel rule r-u-l-e dies those are the thick dies like tim holtz alterations or eileen hall has steel rule dies those are the thick ones that will allow you to do leather and and like eight sheets of cardstock and uh flashing or aluminum and fabric and all sorts of things but if you had a die that had a 
crease or a score line where it was supposed to score and not cut, you would use this pad as part of the sandwich because it would score that line for you. Hence the name crease pad because it helps you make the crease in the die cut where it needs to crease. Now I call it a thud pad because well, it kind of thuds, it's not very loud. Originally Sizzix had a squishy and a knock knock. They had a silicone mat and a, a knock knock. And originally all three of these items were the same color black, all of them black. And on camera teaching you, I had a hard time trying to, to show you which pad I was using. So that's how the squishy came up because well, it's silicone and you can squish it. And now it's gray, but the name's stuck. This is the knock knock pad because well, it knock knocks. And this is the thud pad because well, it's kind of a thud. <laughs> and we really don't use it all that much anymore unless maybe you are using an Eileen Hull die or a Tim Holtz die, something that has a score line where you don't want the die to cut all the way through, you just want it to score. Today we're gonna to use it for something completely different. I love this die. I love the fact that you can make it a die. I love the fact that they have ovals that will work with this die and cut the, I mean, it's just beautiful. But I thought it could do more than just be a die. What if it could be an embossing folder too? You're like an embossing folder. No, embossing folders have two sides and they open and they close and you put the paper in and you send it on through. I know, but we're going to make this kind of an embossing folder and we need to have a crease pad to make that happen. Hmm. Are you ready? Let's get started. I'm going to grab a piece of paper. Hmm. I've got two crease pads here. I'm going to bring over my machine for the remainder of the day. I am going to be using my base plate and my uh, my shim for wafer dies and, and it shows you that it cuts wafer dies which is what I'm doing. So my solo shim and my base plate. I'm then gonna bring over a do not cut plate, a cut plate, it doesn't really matter because I'm gonna have this die facing up. Can you see all the ridges and everything in this die? versus the back side, which is completely flat. I don't want that back side facing down to my, my cut plate or my do not cut plate unless my paper is there. My paper's here, I'm good to go. But if I'm trying to cut it and I put it this way and then put my paper on top, nothing's gonna happen because everything you need is on the other side. So I'm gonna turn that right up to me and I'm gonna put a piece of paper over the top. And instead of using a cut plate on top, I'm gonna substitute in my thud or my crease pad right over the top. So I know I'm repetitious, I understand that. I, I get that it, 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 you know, some of you don't need me to be as repetitious, but I have to assume that some of you are just learning this for the first time, the first time ever seeing this. So the sandwich is my, my base platform, my solo shim. Whether you use a do not cut plate, a cut plate, it makes no difference because my die is gonna be facing up. Could I do it my die facing down? I could, but I'm doing it face up. My die, my paper, and then my crease pad or my thud plate. And I'm gonna send it on through. Now it rolls very, very, very easy. I mean, there's there. it almost feels like there's nothing to it at all. And I'm, I'm gonna bring it on back. Why not? I can. And I'm gonna take it out. In fact, I might do two of them. So there is one. I'm gonna do I'm going to do another one. I got my fingerprints on that. How is that possible? I haven't done anything to get my fingerprints. My fingers aren't even dirty yet. Wait, they will be. 
Okay, so let's take another piece. I'm gonna do two of these. That way we can do apples to apples. So I'm gonna put my plate face up, my paper right on top of it, my crease pad, and I wanna to talk to you just briefly about the shims. Hello, where are you, shims? So your crease pad is going to come with two mylar shims. These aren't shims that you're going to then use to cut into. These are to add a little extra thickness. So for me, I don't know if Ellison likes you to put the shims on the top or the shims on the bottom. To me, the safest place for the shim where I know I'm not gonna cut into it is on the bottom. It's just adding a little extra thickness so that crease pad really creases. And they give you two, and you might need one, you might need two, you may never need them at all. But please don't throw them away because as your machine loosens up like mine has, as, as it takes a little more to get the same pressure through the rollers versus when it was a brand new machine like five years ago, well, those shims are there to help you. And this is just gonna make it roll a little bit tighter and let's send it on back. Now a crease pad is a tool that once you buy it, you should never have to buy it again. It's a, it's a one and done type of thing. Okay, so this didn't cut anything out of either. In fact, I might just leave my crease pad, I might just leave my shim there. This didn't cut anything. Remember, the first time I did it, I was able to cut. No, this didn't do any of it. So what am I gonna do here? I'm gonna take and I'm gonna make this into kind of like an embossing folder. Now this is my first one. This is, and I'm gonna put, this is the top. And this is the bottom. So when I sent this through my machine, it went like this, and this is the top. And when I sent this through my machine again, it went like this, but I'm gonna be using the back side, the bottom side. So let's start, well, do I wanna put it? I'm gonna grab some of my inks, and I'm just gonna go right over the top of it. I'm just going to ink the whole thing up. And maybe I grab uh, so you can see the definition starting to come out. Um, maybe a little bit bolder yellow. Okay. So instead of die cutting with it, I used my crease pad to push the, not my squishy and my knock knock, but to push the impression into my paper, and I can certainly use it this way. But I wanna show you what happens if we turn the paper over. So this and this right now are exactly the same. I'm gonna turn the paper over and use the back side. And let's see what we get with the back side. Can you hear the difference? That's because all of those little piercings 
are pushed up. They're pushed up as opposed to this one where they were pushed down into the paper. I flipped the paper over and now they're pushed up. All right, so I'm gonna do apples to apples because I think that's the right thing to do. So then I used a little bit of the cotton candy And then I used a little bit of the darker yellow, right? You can hear the difference. All right. So here, the top side, it looks nice. It's a little blurry. Here's the bottom side, the back side. Look at that inked. Let's cut away all the noise so that all we're focusing on So by using a crease pad, it allows us to add one more element to this piercing plate, making it look very much like an inked embossing folder. Here's the other side. See, I'm not as, this almost looks watercolory to me and it's okay. Let me get rid of all the noise. The noise is what I call all the stuff that surrounds it. Let's just get rid of all that noise so we can really focus on what we want to focus on. It looks very soft, very watercolory. So now you have apples to apples. And all I did was use a crease pad. Instead of trying to die cut it, I wanted to emboss it. Let's do one more. And Ooh, I'm gonna I'm gonna run out of paper quick here. <laughs> Good thing I pulled out lots of paper. Let's do one more and I'll change the colors up a little bit and I'll cut it in half so we can see the difference. So I'm gonna bring over my machine. Remember, I've got my base platform, my solo shim, my do not cut plate, my extra shim if I need it that comes with my crease pad, my die, which is a piercing plate that has a die cut element to it, my paper, and then my crease pad, my thud plate. And I'm gonna send it on through. It rolls really fairly easily. I mean, it's not a difficult roll at all. And see my hand going. And I'm gonna send it back just because I can. And we'll change up the colors just a little bit. Ooh. No, this time it did cut. See, look at it cut one of them. Maybe the shim, I don't need the shim with that one. Hmm. You think if we take out the shim, look at it got one little piece cut through. Well, let's take out the shim. Let's see if it won't cut. Okay, so no shim this time. <laughs> Paper, crease, 
and send it on through. And send it on back. Don't want to lose my shims. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, so here's the side. Here's the side that would be the top. And oh, we'll use soft yellow. And let's use maybe Tide Pool. That's pretty. Okay, so that's pretty. Let's do the back side. And let's come in and use Soft Yellow again. So there's a little bit of gold on here. Gosh, you can hear the difference. Do you hear that? My crease pad had a little bit of gold on it, so it transferred over. But that versus that. That's how you know the dots are raised. Everything's pushed out. And then let's go ahead and use my Tide Pool. It's a dramatic difference between the two sides. So let's get rid of all of our little noise, everything around it. I personally prefer the back side over the front. But when you're using white paper, you have options. It's up to you which one you like. You don't have to choose. Ink them both up and then decide. Look at the difference, and it is dramatic. This is the top side, this is the bottom side, and this is not using this plate in the intended manner, but with this side, you really get the detail of that piercing. You see all the little dots all that super fine detail comes up. And it's beautiful. All that super beautiful detail comes up. And it's just beautiful. So that is using their piercing plate in a way that wasn't intended. It works, and then of course I can still cut with it, absolutely. And you should know that they've made a set of ovals, oval dies that work so well with this entire collection. It's part of the collection. This set has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, oh, yeah. Yep, I could have just looked on the front. 16 dies, and everything inside this collection works with these ovals beautifully. So I could take one of the ovals, and decide, pull one out to get exactly what I want out of this. I could do this one right here, grab the oval that'll do this. I could grab an oval that will do just that and get rid of my corners. It's all about options and the ovals really make, make it work. You'll see it in the samples. So let me push this over here for now because we're going to move on. So this one has a lot of detail, right? A lot to look at. 
This one is more, this is the, this is the, okay, where are you? Here, it's this set right here. This is a glimmer plate. Can you see it? Let me open it up so you can see it. This isn't a die. It's meant to glimmer. So this is meant to go through your Go Press and Foil, your glimmer machine, or your machine by uh, Gemini. Absolutely. It looks like a die, but it is not. Now this does come with dies. You've got two or three sentiments here that are also glimmer dies, and then they've included the die so you can cut the sentiments out. But the main piece, the main piece is meant to just glimmer that beautiful image. Love the image, love, love, love the image. So I'm gonna play with that as well, and I'm gonna bring over some more white paper and we're gonna do a wash, rinse, and repeat. I'm gonna do, in fact, I don't need to, I can cut this into fours. We're gonna do a wash, rinse, and repeat. So I'm gonna do exactly what I did with the piercing plate. And I think I'll do two of them because that's the easiest way for me to show you. I'm gonna continue using my my thud pad, my crease pad. My sandwich hasn't changed. Base plate, solo shim. Do not cut plate because it's nice and flat. My die. Well, I could ink that up. I could. Hmm. How about if I ink one of them and I don't ink one of them? Hmm. What if I went ahead and I just added... A little bit of ink. So the difference between a a die cut and a glimmer or a hot foil plate is really the thickness of the of the lines. A foil plate, your lines need to be a little bit thicker. A little bit thicker. So that foil can transfer. That means that ink holds on to these pretty well. So I can kind of ink up my whole little area. We'll see what we get. I can see that I've got some flowers there, so maybe I add a little bit of pink in here. All right, and I'm gonna send it through the exact same way. Base plate, solo shim, do not cut plate, die, paper, crease pad. And I'm gonna send it on through. and I've transferred my ink. Pretty, right? I've transferred my ink. I could do that with black ink and then go in there and watercolor everything. So lovely and so easy to do. But, Let's go ahead and I wanna do apples to apples. So I'm gonna clean this off real quick, get the ink off of it. Or should I keep inking it? No, I'll do it also. You can see it's all the different ways. Okay, ink off, another piece of white paper. Here. See, I've got some, 
<laughs> I've got some luster wax on my on my crease pad and I'm going to send it on through. This time no ink. And I'm going to bring it on back. So I've got my front and I've got my back. Now my front is the same front as this one, only non-inked. So if I wanted to, I could go in and grab Yeah. To me, I can't tell what this is supposed to be. I can clearly tell what this is. But inking on the top, I have a hard time figuring out what that is. But if I just turn it over and use the back side, what can I do with the back side? It's raised, it's embossed. Looky, looky what I'm able to do. Oh, and while this one is debossed, so the lines go down in, because I flipped it over, this one is now embossed. And looky what I can do. Now this is a glimmer plate. It's supposed to be able to foil. That's its main job, is to foil. But now I've got the embossed side and the debossed side. Both of them inked, this one a little subtler This one was inked as I put it through the machine because otherwise it just looks like a hot mess. It looks like this. So these two are the these two are the same. This was inked to get it to look like this. You must ink it before you put it through the machine. You must ink the die and then put your paper on top and send it through. If you just send it through and come back to ink after, this is what you're going to get. But if you turn it over, which do you like better? You don't have to choose. This one, texture is raised. This one, the texture is underneath. Choices, options. You may not have a glimmer machine yet. You may not have a foil machine yet. You may get one, you may want one, and then if you already have this, you know you can use it but you can use it right now too. Doing beautiful things. Like I said, you could come in and do this in black and watercolor, but I'm not done with this die yet. Or hot foil plate. Let's do something more with it. Let's grab Let's grab our essentials glue pad. You're like an essentials glue pad, what's that? That is this, 
and it comes like this and that's how it's sold just like this once you have the pad you don't have to replace the pad but this is the glue that goes on the pad this is like a go-to thing for me I use it all the time when you open it yours will look much nicer than mine ooh <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> it has a um it has a little cover that you want to keep and when you get it it's going to come completely dry there will be nothing on the foam at all you'll be like wait what happened they sent me a dry pad no the glue is in the bottle and you don't put all the glue on the pad at one time Please don't buy this, get it, and then put all the glue on here and then come back two months later and expect to be able to use it. You only put as much glue on your pad as you need for the job you're doing that day. And when you run out of glue and it goes a long way, you just buy another glue bottle. You don't have to buy another pad. So mine has already got glue built into it because I've been using it for, um, for years. I could add just a little, look at that, just a little bit more glue, a little more glue. Kind of schmooze it around with my finger. Get my baby wipe and get my fingers not so sticky. And I'm gonna glue up my hot foil plate. And I'm gonna do it just like I was doing, just like I was using it as a stamp. Okay, we'll see if that's enough. Time will tell. Thankfully, I'm just using black paper. All right, let's bring over a piece. I can cut it down. I don't need it to be so big. Bring over my Big Shot machine and my sandwich stays the same. I'm not changing anything. So I'm gonna put my hot foil plate right down on top, oh, right down on top of my do not cut plate. I'm gonna put my paper right on top of that. I'm going to put my crease pad right on top of that and I'm going to send it through. Easy roll, easy, easy peasy. And then I can bring it on back. Now, if I did this right, my glue will have transferred. Can you see it in there? My glue will have transferred from my hot foil plate into my paper. And you can see just how deep that impression is. And then you can see how deep the embossed side is. Now, what am I gonna do that it's all glued up? Well, this is where I pull out my Pearl X. Now, you can use any mica powder you want. We have gone with Pearl X. In fact, I'm gonna get my table a little clean. It's a little sticky. We've gone with Pearl X because at last year's Creativation NAFTA show, I learned about how amazing the product is. So it is a mica powder and it is similar to a Perfect Pearl or by Ranger or um, Ozzy Andrew Couture Creations Pearl Micas or Cre uh, Creative Expressions has, has powdered micas. They're all about the same. The difference is the Ranger product and the Couture Creations product and the Creative Expressions product has the binder already built into each of the jars. So there's this product called gum arabic and they mix the gum arabic in with the pigment to make the color. Pearlex is 100% pigment. There is no there is no gum arabic. There's no binder pre-mixed in. We sell the gum binder which is so inexpensive so that you can mix in only as much as you need of that binder to keep the color as intense as you want it to be. But I'm using glue. This is a glue pad that I put on here. I don't need a binder because the glue is going to hold it in place. And that glue needs to go a little tacky. 
Mmm, I know, look at the colors. Don't you just want to go yum? <gasps> oh, makes my heart happy. So maybe a little bit of this and a little bit of this and maybe a little bit of this. I don't know, it's so beautiful. My gosh, I go crazy inside these colors and they last forever. So this is the series number two. The two I'm using today are the, uh, the probably the metallic calligraphy set because it has lots of the metallics in the rose gold in series number two. So let's get into some of these and let's see what we can do. So I've got my blue. I don't need to add any gum, look at that color. I don't need to add any gum Arabic because I'm working on, I'm working with glue. And I'm just gonna dab, dab, dab. I'm gonna dab, 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 and let's get a little bit of this yellow, or maybe we want gold. Let me get into that calligraphy set. So if you already have Pearl X, you probably have colors that are going to work just fine. Oh, this one doesn't want to open. Oh, there we go. Let's get the gold out. If you have Perfect Pearl, you will be able to do this as well. If you have Couture Creations, you're gonna be able to do this as well. It's all about having that glue act as your binder. So let's mix in maybe a little bit of gold. And I'm just gonna let them kind of mix into each other. And maybe some green. Oh, that's so pretty. And a little bit more gold, and I'm just going to dab, dab, dab. And I know I've got some green down here. And we want to do a little more gold. Kind of dab, dab, dab. I'm just making a hot mess. I know it looks just like a hot mess. I got this yellow. Let's see what the yellow looks like in comparison. Oof. And then that pink. Did I go too far, too many colors? Is there such a thing? <laughs> They're not wet. I'm not adding water to them. Okay, so I've really got a hot mess going on. I'm going to take a makeup brush. Let me close some of these up so I don't get them everywhere. Man, that blue is amazing. Okay. They're almost closed. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna take and I'm gonna dust all that off. And that's what I'm gonna be left with. Look at how pretty is that. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. So I've got my, I've got my micas here now. I've got my plate. I've got my glue. My hands are dirty. Okay, we'll try and keep that clean. I've got my glue pad. 
Do I need to add a little bit more glue? Maybe. And you want to give the glue time on your paper to go a little tacky. Give it a few minutes. Although these are such fine lines, it, it, it goes tacky really fast. This glue needs to go tacky. It's a, it's a two-way glue, and that's an important feature about the glue. All right. Wipe off my hands because they're sticky. Bring over my machine. Bring over my paper. Oh, leave that on there. Die down. Hot foil plate down, actually. Paper down. Thud plate crease pad down. And away we go. You can see that it's there. A little bit of a waft, let it go tacky. In the meantime, I can clean this off because it's water soluble. So you just use your baby wipes to clean your plates. And let's see, what's the blue in here? that blue. So a little bit of blue. I got a different blue, a softer blue. And let's grab that gold. And let's grab that green. Maybe a little bit of that pinky. And Let's add a little bit of gold to him and a little bit of blue. And I'm just going from pot to pot because it's not wet. And some green. And a little goes a long way. And maybe some of my pink for my flowers. Think we're good? Kind of looks like a hot little mess there. How does he look now? Right? Amazing! And easy. You need the crease pad to get this done. If you use two cut plaids, you can, it, 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 it's a little harder and it wants to cut the, try and cut everything out and it's not meant to cut. Look at how beautiful is he. Yay! Yay, so we did, so I did this one over here. And this time I went a little heavier on the glue. And you can see the difference. But remember, we did him 
gosh, where'd they go? We did him way back here. Well, somewhere. <laughs> nope, not there. Not there. Not there. Okay, where did you guys see what I did with my other samples? My guy, the guys I, I did, I, oh, here. I did them a little earlier. So now we've done them with ink. And we've done them. That looks, that looks fab. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy with him. We might have to make something out of him. He looks amazing. Ooh, happy day. Okay, but time to move on. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna keep these open maybe. You're like, don't spill them, Stacy. I know, I know, I know, I hear you, but that doesn't mean I'm not gonna spill them anyway. All right, so let's get, let's get this one. So this is from the Stylish Ovals collection, and this is one that has a corresponding oval. This is a glimmer plate. It is a foiling plate, but they made the die specifically to cut around it if you want. So everything in the Stylish Ovals collections will coordinate with the, what are they calling this? Essentials Stylish Ovals. Yes, that'll do. <laughs> And you can see how it just lines up perfect. But let's go ahead and let's ink this one up in glue. Let's see how much of a piece of paper I'm gonna need. And let's bring over my glue pad. Let's see if I have enough on it without having to add more to it. Okay, that feels pretty good. All we can do is try and all we're using is black paper. Okay. And I'll bring over my machine. I could do it if I if I decide to put this this way then I need to change my crease pad needs to be on the bottom. If I'm going to do it this way, then my crease pad needs to be on the bottom and my do not cut plate needs to be on the top. There's really no right or no wrong. Both ways will work. It does matter which way makes the most sense to you, I suppose. I still get that beautiful embossing on the back side, but more importantly, I've got that glue transferred on the inside. Now I'll give it a moment to kind of waft it, and I will clean off my plate. Of course, if I was gonna glue it again and run it through, I wouldn't clean it. I would just go ahead and glue it a second time This time, maybe I will try to not get the sides as much. So I'm gonna try not to get those sides quite as much. And let's send it on through while that one's going tacky. This one we'll come right back to it bring my machine back on over and I can leave it just the way it is put my paper down and now my my foil plate has to face down because my 
crease pad is on the bottom. Send it on through. Send it on back. If you add the shims and you find that it is too, too much pressure, you will find that the, the foil plate can cut in some spaces. Oh, I still got quite a bit on there, but that's okay. So I've got another one going. Let's come back. Keep that one handy and wipe off. Now I could let the glue dry on here. It wouldn't be the end of the world. I just have to wash it. Since the glue is water soluble, if it dries on there, it's not a problem. And then let's come in and let's try and paint a little bit. So I'm gonna look and see. I see I've got my butterfly there. I've got some flowers here. So I'm gonna go in. I can see where my flowers are. They kind of look like they're right there. And right there. And right there. And I can grab into that because that's a lot. And right there. And I still got a lot going on so I can bring them on down here. And there. I'm just picking up the, the extra. I had a lot on that one flower, so I'm just going to use it. No reason to go dig, you know, dipping back in for powder if you don't need it. And then maybe a little bit of gold. Kind of here and there, just kind of hit it with the gold here and there. Really no rhyme. No rhyme, no reason. And then maybe I hit it with the blue. Just a little bit of blue here and there. I've got that butterfly. Mm, maybe I make the butterfly gold. Okay, kind of looks like a hot mess and I probably have more powder than there than I need. But the powder goes a really long way. And then I'm gonna come in I'm going to dust it off. Now, do you need to set it? No, you don't because the glue, the glue is what has set it in place. The glue has set it in place. Let's see, I've got this one over here. Maybe I pull out, mm, that's a pretty color. Maybe I pull out this one. And I'll try to use less powder. Because you really don't need much. And you really just have to dot it where you want it to go because it's all gonna fall in place when you use your inexpensive makeup brush to kind of swirl it around. Now remember, this is a glimmer plate. This is a foil plate, but we're using it for something completely different. A little bit of gold, kind of up and around, and then maybe a little bit of green for my leaves. Hot Mess Central. Uh, 
ました。<笑>イエーイ<笑> They're so pretty and they're so easy to do. And then remember, you have the oval that can cut the whole thing out. So let's see, is it this one? could go bigger and have a border of black around it. How about I do one one way and the other the other way? So this, this will leave like a border of black all the way around it. And this one, I'll cut both of them. That way we can see, right? So to bring my machine on over, this time I am not going to be using my crease pad. I am going to need a cut plate because I do want the die to cut. I don't need to put any kind of spray or uh, uh, anything to affix the mica because I used a glue to put it down in the first place. I can't tell how close I am. We're just gonna go. This is an open frame die. It's not intricate at all. One pass, easy peasy, no precision base plate needed. And now I've cut it out. Or I could have it much closer. Bring over the first one that I did with the smaller die, the next one down in size. Line it on up. Does that look good to you? I so want to stand over the top of it, but. And then let's send it on through. and it's a tighter oval as opposed to one that has more of a border you decide totally up to you I'm keeping these where I know to find them so when we come back I can remember, <laughs> I can find my samples to show you where we started. I'm gonna put them right there. So up to you whether you like the bigger border, the smaller border, or you don't want a border at all. You just wanna leave it on the black and cut it into a rectangle. But we did this using a foil plate. Okay, are we ready to move on? Okay, this foil plate is a little different than the others. So far, everything has had a pretty easy background or very little background at all. This one had very little background at all, same here. Whereas here, this one, has a lot of space, a lot of space in between them. So inking this up can be a little more difficult. Can we ink it up with just ink and send it through? Um, yeah, we can. Ooh, let's put some lids back on. Why tempt fate more than once, right? I agree. Green, green. Blue, blue, oh, blue, blue, gold, gold, and I'm going to guess this one's red. Okay, why tempt fate? <laughs> so could we ink this up and send it on through? Sure, we can. In fact, let's, um, let's see what happens. 
when we do because it's got so much background there's a higher chance that we're going to get some of this ink on the background and then maybe we come in with I don't know if the purple was the right choice Yeah, see, I'm going to get it on the background. I can see that already. I feel like it needs more of a color somewhere. Well, I might have must just made a mess of it, but that's okay. We're going to bring it on over, and it's only white paper. If I have to do it more than once, I will. So we're going to go back to a foil plate and just inking. So I've got my do not cut. I've got my plate. I've got my paper. And then my crease pad. Remember, when you're using the foil plate, you're going to use, oh, I just moved it. You're going to use the crease pad. And let's send it on through and see what we get. Oh, it's not bad. Okay, I kind of like those butterflies. I'm, 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 I'm not mad at that. I think I'm going to do it one more time. Let's cut a piece of paper. About one piece of paper. Let's ink it up again and I think I'm I think I'm okay. I think I'm going to stick with the yellow. And thing, I think I like that blue with it. And I don't want all of them to have the same look. And then I like that ultra pink with it. Maybe come back with that tide pull just a little bit more. Okay, let's see what we get. Try it one more time. Straight ink. Easy peasy. Paper over the top. Crease pad. and send it on through. Yeah, I'm okay with that. You're like, yeah, but I don't like the background, Stacy. <laughs> I'm not crazy about having the extra on the background. I don't like having all that little extra on there. Well, it doesn't bother me any, but because when you trim it on down, and that looks okay. But 
if that's not for you, the beautiful thing about this, this plate right here is that it comes with the matching dies. Hello? Yes. I could take each of these dies and I could cut out individual butterflies. So I've got them all inked the way I like them. I'm happy with that. And now I can go in and I can die cut individual butterflies out without any problem. The dies come with the, the glimmer plate. See, it's meant to glimmer. See, ooh, glimmer. But we're doing so much more than glimmer. And I'm not done with the butterflies. Let's put that there and let's clean my butterflies off. Because again, it's got that plate. So the, the ink is so easily kind of, when you touch it, when you touch it with the ink, it's easy to get it down on the bottom, but that's okay. You saw how great it looked. I think that's, I think it almost looks like it was meant to be that way. Yay. But let's play with the glue. The glue, yeah, let's get out the glue. Okay, glue pad. Hello, glue pad. Little bit of glue. Hardly any, because I've got enough on there already. I just want to kind of reactivate it. Finger. <laughs> and then that's glue up our butterflies. Okay, I think I've got enough glue on them. We're gonna know the minute I put it through. And this time I'm gonna grab a piece of black paper. Bring over my machine. This is a glimmer plate, a foil plate. So I know I'm gonna need to use my crease pad, my thud pad. Put it right down on. And send it on through. And if you want to bring it back, you can. It's not going to hurt it. Well, see, I can tell I got lots of glue going on. So while that one sets, let's just ink it up, glue it up one more time. I'm not going to add any more glue. I got plenty happening. And we'll do it again. Well, that one's kind of getting tacky. So you can leave this glue on this paper for 20, 30 minutes, come back, and it's still going to hold whatever you put down in the way of a powder or a glitter or a mica. It is called two, it's a two-way glue. And you may already have it in your crafty stash, but don't realize what to do with it. There's so much to do with this glue pad. It's like one of my most favorite things ever. I would like the glue bottle to be bigger. <laughs> that would be, if I could change something, I would change the glue bottle to be a little bit bigger. All right, so I've got it on there too. Now let's go back and let's play with some of our, play with some of our micas. 
um, yellow, blue, pink, I'm just, you see how I'm just kind of hitting it? That's no rhyme, no reason. I just want some of the color down. Because when I go to move it, wherever it's sticky, wherever it's tacky, is where it's going to adhere. Man, that blue is gorgeous. Too much, way too much. Okay, what do we think? We're good? Plenty, right? Plenty. I agree. A little goes a long way. You take care of your powders, you'll have them for almost a lifetime. And let's see. beautiful and I could take my dies and cut each one of those butterflies out if I didn't want to use it as a background so let's play with this one because I've got this one let's go here And maybe here. So this one's more gold. And maybe a little bit of the green. You think the green will be okay? only paper. You've got more black paper. Okay, let's see what we get. do this all day long. I could make the most beautiful backgrounds and just have fun. Okay. Yay. <laughs> Ooh, makes my heart happy. I love them. This one a little more subtle. Yeah, I can't add any more. That one a little more bright and bold. But fun, fun, fun and easy to do. And even though it got on the background, because of the way the plate is and because we're using a crease pad, a gush pad, it leaves a perfect outline of every butterfly. The glue doesn't get in there. 
leaves a perfect outline of every single butterfly. Whole new way to use these dies. Oh, yes. Okay, what's next? <laughs> okay, what's next? Oh my gosh, okay, okay, we're gonna change it up. Wait, 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 are you ready? Okay, we're gonna change it up. We're gonna change it up, right? Yeah, we're gonna change, yeah, we're gonna change it up. Okay, we're gonna do, okay, so I've got this one now. All right, so put my lids back on. Again, glimmer plate, not a die, has an oval that will cut this out perfectly as part of the stylish oval collection. Yay, perfectly cut it out, easy peasy mac and cheesy. But let's say you want to use embossing powder. Hmm, we would need a Versamark. Now, okay, let's have a talk. Hold on just a moment, please. Hold, please. There is a difference between Versamark and Essentials Glue. Versamark. Hello, Versamark. Been around forever. Do I have it upside down? No, good. <laughs> it would be just like me to go, Versamark. <laughs> yeah, that would be me. <laughs> okay, been around forever. Tried and true. It is an embossing medium or a watermark medium. What does that mean to you? That means that this is a medium, a liquid, a, 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 a liquid that's in a stamp pad form. It's super thick. The reinker is super thick. It stays wet long enough for you to throw down embossing powder and heat it up to melt it into a solid. And embossing powder is just plastic for all intents and purposes. It's super, super finely ground plastic that when you heat it up, it melts. I'm gonna show you, it melts and, and turns into a solid from a powder. Versamark is what allows you to do that. It also allows you to do a watermark image. So, hmm, watermark. Hmm, watermark. Okay, so I'll show you the watermark before I put the, if you have a stamp or a glimmer plate or a foiling plate and you put your Versamark on it and then you run it through and you are on green paper or pink paper or blue paper, wherever that Versamark is, the color is going to deepen because now it looks wet, right? You just added something that is a liquid to paper, so now it looks wet. But if you don't add any embossing powder over the top of it and you just let that Versamark dry, it dries as that watermark. It'll, it'll lighten up a little bit, but it is a tone on tone look, which is amazing if you've got a project that you're doing, a card that you're making, and you need a background, but you need it to be subtle. And you take one of your stamps and you ink it up with Versamark and you stamp on your dark paper. It needs to be darker paper. You're not going to see so much on lighter paper. You stamp on your darker paper. It has that kind of wet look where the stamped image was. Very subtle. It lightens up just a little bit as it dries but you've given a depth and a dimension to flat paper, not by using an ink, but by using Versamark. And because it's a clear liquid, you know the minute you, you ink with it, you stamp with it, the color's gonna match because all it's doing is darkening up the tone that you're already working with. You don't have to go try and find an ink that's going to be slightly darker than the color paper you're using. Just use a Versamark for that tone on tone look for a watermark image. Or you use your Versamark if you're going to throw down embossing powder. This is what you use. This is what you use if you need to glue something down. If you are stamping, if you put this on your stamp, and you stamp with it and you let it go tacky and you put glitter on it and you move the glitter around like you're with your finger like I do or, or you do what I did here. 
here did this with the glue um did this with the glue if you did this with versamark when the versamark dries your mica your glitter your foil whatever your flakes whatever you're doing are going to wipe right off because this is not a glue this is a glue <laughs> mm -hmm. it's essential that you glue it down essentials glue pad it's essential to glue you want to glue something down it's essential that you use glue that's what this is essentials glue pad you want to put glitter down you want to you, 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 whatever we're doing today if i'm using the glue pad these are not interchangeable to each other, yet they're equally important to each other because they give you more opportunity to do more things with that stamp or that foil plate or that die or whatever it is you're using. Hmm, key. All right, so, and I knew I'd make a mess. Stacy. gosh, I was so close to being out of here without a mess. I got blue all over my, of course I do. So we're going to use embossing powder. Embossing powder, Versamark. Mm -hmm. You wanna leave your mark with an embossing powder. So I'm going to grab my foil plate. Let's go back down now that we've had that talk. Two different things, both of them important. Both of them important, but they don't do the same thing. Okay, down we go. Glad we had that talk. <laughs> we get that question all the time. My glitter just wiped right off. What did you use to put down with? Did you use a, an essentials glue pad? No, I used my Versamark. Hmm, that's why the right tool for the right job. So important. So I'm gonna use embossing powder. Let's grab my Versa mark, and let's get some paper. Let's ink it up. Now, Versamark, you don't need to constantly add reinker to because it comes already, already with the Versamark on it. Yes, you're going to eventually want to buy a reinker, but this is going to be inked up just like your other ink pads are. When you buy it, you get it. It's already got ink on it. Yay, you're happy. But when it starts to dry out, you buy the reinker and you, you put a little bit on there to rejuvenate it to get it back up to what you need it to be so it's usable. Unlike the Essentials glue pad where you don't put the glue on until you need it. So let's just add a little Versamark going on. Hopefully that's enough. I'll know the minute I roll it through. So I'm a girl who likes to do it this way. I have a harder time with the crease pad down towards the bottom, but you do you. I like the crease pad towards the top. Can't tell you why. <laughs> I have no idea. It just is the way I like it. <laughs> Roll it through. Let's see if it transferred. I think I've got some in there. Can you see where it's kind of shiny? Let's just do another one since I've got both pieces of paper. We'll just do both of them. Why not? I'm not pressing down too hard. I 
you look at foil plates all the time and you say, oh my gosh, I love that design, but I don't have a foil machine. Okay, look at what we've done. We've inked them. We've used micas with them. We're going to use embossing powders with them, but we're still not going to be done. <laughs> told you I had a lot to show you. My mind just went, ooh. And they were all excited. Spellbinders was all excited about the stylish ovals. And I'm like, yeah, but I really, really, really love the, is it seahorse kisses or whatever? It's beautiful. Okay. So this one has been sitting there for a little bit. It will stay wet quite you know quite some time not as long as the essentials glue pad you don't have that much time to work with it but you do have quite a bit let's pull over let's pull over my copper oh i should have done one in gold i should or i should have done one in in white maybe i'll do one in white too embossing powder is just a finely ground up plastic substrate. Well, look at how it's clinging in there. Hello, isn't that a little bit of happiness right there? And let's go here. Hello. Aren't you gonna be beautiful when you're done? You pretty little thing. Now here, if you've never seen embossing powder before, you're going, um, <laughs> where's the beautiful? Wait, <laughs> just give me a minute. I promise. All right, I think I'm gonna be good with that. I'm gonna put all of this right back in my jar. And I think I am going to do one in white. So I'm going to stick this off to the side and let's grab, gosh, I have this one here. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lose that one yet. I'm going to grab a piece of paper and I'm going to Versa mark back up and I'm going to do this one in white so we can have one in white and one in black. Bring over my plate. some mark. Hopefully not too much. Time will tell. Bring my machine on over. Plate, paper, crease pad. If you don't have a crease pad, doing this is going to be a lot more difficult and a little more frustrating. If you just remember your crease pad with glimmer plates or with foil plates. Oh, that's so pretty. I Well, you can't see it, but it really is so pretty. Okay, I'm gonna put that there. And you know what? Just because I can, I'm gonna do this one too. Just because I can. So this one I'm gonna put over here and we're gonna put some embossing powder on that in just a minute. I'm gonna Versa mark this one up. So to me, less Versa mark is better. Lightly tap it. And let's see what we get. Gosh, did I remember to take the glue off of that one? Hmm. Well, we may have multiple options with this one if it still has glue on it. <laughs> It really is about taking the fear away of trying. These were, you know, I, these are things I thought of when I saw the product. Did I know if they were going to work? Heavens no, of course I didn't. But I don't have any fear of trying. I'm the girl who's like, yep, let's do it and see what happens. Because if it doesn't work, well, we shop for the fences. And if it does work, well, happy day for me. 
Okay, I don't know. We won't know until we put some embossing powder on it. So let's grab the black. I'll do this one in the black. makes my heart happy. Takes such little things to make me happy, to excite me. I've seen embossing before like a billion times. How many foil plates do you already own? Maybe you don't want a foil. Okay, I'm gonna leave that like that. We're gonna heat, yep, we're gonna heat. And I'm gonna do that one in, I'm gonna do that one in the copper and see what we get. With a little touch of black that I just dribbled on it. Shh. Oh wow, wait, I did make a mess. Okay, let's pull that up before I put my arm through it. Well now we've got a little black and a little copper going on my seahorse. Okay, so what you need to know about embossing powder, if you've never embossed it before, is that as long as it is a powder, it will wipe away. If I took my hand and rubbed it over this, I would wipe all of this away and I'd have to start all over again. Until it is made a solid, it is no different than any other powder that you can wipe away because VersaMark is not glue. So there's no glue holding that in place. There's just a wet medium that keeps it wet long enough for us to do something with. So let's grab a heat tool. This is a Sizzix heat tool. A blow dryer will not do, it will not get hot enough. At the same time, please don't use this to try and blow dry your hair, it will singe. This is the Sizzix tool, you can see mine is loved. It has two speeds. It has a little stand if you wanna put it so it stands up. I'll tell you that I'm comfortable enough to use high speed and I can get super close and it won't burn my paper. I'm not doing this. I'm going to stick into one section until I see that embossing powder change. Oh, can you see it change? And as it changes, I move my heat tool. Now I'm just gonna stop right there for those who have never seen embossing powder before. There is the pretty. So it goes from this to that. Amazing. And it's dry. The minute it cools, cool to the touch, it's dry because it's a plastic. Now looky there, look at that big old space right in the middle. That tells me 
I did not have enough heat and if I take my finger and rub that over it's going to rub right away and I'm going to have to start again. No way to fix that. That tells me I need to add more heat. I'm almost there. See, I still have a little bit of a dull spot. And can you see I'm holding my paper and the heat tool at the same time? I love the Ellison Sizzix heat tool. Great little thing, great tool. Look at that. Uh-huh, now that looks pretty. And then, of course, we can come in and die cut it out. Yay. So I'm gonna put that one right. See, I already supposed to keep everything over here for when we come back to it and I already made a mess. Okay, let's do let's do the black. So one side of my black is shiny here. This side is still dull. This side's still a powder. If I move my finger over it, it's going to wipe right away. I think I've got it all, all black, ready to go. And of course I could, right there. But I could also, Add a little color to it because it acts as a resist. The embossing powder, because it's plastic, ooh, way too dark, way too much, acts as a resist. And the ink just goes right over the top of it and absorbs right into the paper. And then I can die cut it out. I could go in there and I could watercolor it. I could go in there, I could alcohol ink it. I could do anything I want once it's embossed. We still have this one. embossed. Options are yours, but you can absolutely use your glimmer plates, any of your hot foil plates, whoever makes them, to ink, to mica, to emboss, but we're not done. Oh, 
I know. You're like, well, how much more? Well, I'm sorry, but there's a lot. We're almost there. Almost there. I'm going to turn to my luster wax right now. I'm going to turn to my luster wax. And this is a Sizzix product. Love luster wax. Currently only comes in four colors. The fourth color is an interference color that does purple. I'm going to play with the gold today, but I wanted to show you the gold, the silver, the copper. We'll put them all on sale. I think most of you probably have luster wax. These are my original jars from like three years ago. <laughs> this is a true wax based product. It is honest to goodness wax. It has, um, it's almost like a furniture polish, shoe, shoe polish type of finish to it. And, and it goes and it goes and it goes. I showed it a couple weeks ago with um, Creative Expressions. They have their Wax Lyrical and their Gilded Touch, which is also a waxy type of product, but not as wax-based as the Sizzix product. So the Sizzix product will let me move it a lot. If this was Wax Lyrical or Gilded Touch from Creative Expressions, you don't have this much open time. And when I say open time, that means how much time will the product let you manipulate it? How much time can I move it and manipulate it? And look it. I did a whole sheet of paper last time that I did this because I could. The product lets me do it. It stays open for that long of a time and it just keeps spreading out. So I'm taking what's on the sides and using that. I haven't dipped back in for a while and I'm taking what's on the sides and using that. and I can make a full sheet of gold. I can go in there and I can pick up more. If I wanted to really be a solid gold, just pick up more gold and go over it a little bit lighter. Don't press so hard. And you'll have a more opaque gold look as opposed to the black coming through. Just go in there and get it. Come back out. and I'm just going softly over the top and not pressing too hard. And you can see my black is disappearing to a solid sheet of gold. It's beautiful and it dries super fast. I will tell you, it is meant to go on wood and plastic and metal and glass and paper. If you get it on wood, it's going to stay. If you put it on metal, it's going to stay. If you put it on plastic, it's going to stay. So if you're a 3D printer and you're making cute little things and you're doing it out of red, um, red plastic, your 3D printer, maybe you have red or green plastic, get yourself luster wax and you can change anything into the gold, the silver, or the copper. When it is copper, they call it rose gold, but don't be fooled. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, beautiful, right? I know. <laughs> okay, let's play with it. Mm, maybe I should do one in silver too since I've got both of them. Same jar I've been using. And I grab new foams for my silver and my rose, my rose gold if I want to use it. I'll tell you because this is a wax based product, the foamies never get dry, they don't dry up. I just couldn't find mine. I had the gold is the original foam from years gone by and it just never gets yucky. It just stays perfect. So yay. And you can see how long it lets me move the wax around. Now I am working on, I am working on new colors of luster wax. I love the wax lyrical and the Gilded Touch from Creative Expressions, but it has its purpose. I couldn't do something like this with those products. It just dries almost instantaneously. You don't have this open time.
to play with it. And pull from the sides. Oops. And now if I want it more silver, go in and a lighter touch. Just a lighter touch. And I'm creating a beautiful piece of silver. I still need to go in and blend a little bit more. I can see that now that it's in the, the camera. I'm going and blend it a little bit more. But because you've got that open time, I can. <laughs> All right. So now I've got both of them. And are they dry? Yeah. Yay. Hello, Mom. Look, no mess. I put this one to the side, and I'm going to bring this back over. Ooh, and look at I can do I can do multiples. Yay for me. Bring over my machine. We're keeping the platforms the same because this is a what? What is this? It is a foiling plate, not a die cutting plate. Crease pad required. I call it a thud pad. Crease pad required. So my sandwich, just to come back to the very beginning, my base plate that comes with my machine, my solo shim, my do not cut plate or a cut plate, it doesn't matter, it's just something that's nice and flat, my foil plate, hmm, okay, this is, this is where it's going to get a little, okay, so, let's talk. <laughs> You are going to want me to put that gold facing down against the foil plate. I know you are. You're going to want me to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use the bottom. Remember, this would be the top. This would be the bottom. Remember all the way back long, long ago when we did the top and the bottom? This was the top. This was the this was the bottom. Remember when we did these long long ago? I need this gold to be facing me if this is the orientation of my sandwich. Write this down, make a note. <laughs> this is important because there is a difference. Ready? So I know, I know you all want me to put the gold this way, but I'm not going to. I'm going to put it this way and I'm going to put my crease pad with the gold around it down because it is going to transfer onto here. I suppose you might be able to take, you think of the shim? Shim might keep it from doing that, but then it's going to stick to the shim. Maybe a super thin piece of paper. Do I have a super thin piece of paper? I don't know that I do. Hmm. What is handy? What do I have that's handy? Well, Could I put this down so that it doesn't transfer onto my, my crease pad? Let's get a new crease pad and let's see if it transfers. Let's see what happens. Sorry, Kelly. Kelly, thank you for, for, for allowing me to use yours. <laughs> and let's send it on through. 
So the extra piece of pa paper makes it a little tighter, but not much. Bring it back. Hmm. That's good. It moved. It moved. And it caused it to cut a little bit. Hmm, see it transferred. Hmm, let's do it again with the other one, only this time let's not use the extra piece of paper. I'm gonna go up and I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge that I'm going to get it on my crease pad. So one side is always, if you're gonna use it with a, with a, a luster wax or any kind of a wax, the other side you keep so that you don't. And let's see what happens. Yeah, see it goes through a little bit easier. Yeah, better. And then I have this side and see it's on my it's on my crease pad um, getting it off not so easy it just kind of hangs there I'm okay with that you can try putting something very thin uh, so that it will absorb it and not get on your crease pad but I'm okay with that so I've got this one and then let's do this one And same thing, my silver's going to face me. I might transfer some of my gold onto my silver, but it's crafting. And let's see what we get. I did I transferred a little bit of my gold actually I like it but all right what are we gonna do with them well now that we have two of them I'm gonna sand it what do you mean you're gonna sand it well I took black paper and I made it gold and I made it silver so I'm gonna sand it because you know what's gonna happen that black is gonna come back up and through huh sand it and that black is going to come up and through because I made my gold paper out of black paper so you could make whatever you want red paper to sand through then use red paper and put gold over red you want purple paper to come through use purple paper with gold over the top of it what color paper do you want to sand through Haha. -ha. And it's just beautiful. And then you take your die cut and you die cut it out and it's magnificent. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's do the silver and see what happens with the silver.
You know how I sanded a little? Oh, no, I didn't. I'm good. Silver. I thought I sanded too much, but it was the paper. See, that's the paper coming off. That's the black paper. Told you my hands would eventually look like this. So pretty. Now, you can't get black, or you can't get gold paper that has a black inside. I mean, white core maybe, but black, no, never seen it, not ever, ever. But if you make your own paper, ooh, and the luster wax just totally leads to that, yay. But what if we went on the other side? Hmm. Hmm. Should we try one more? Let's get another sheet of black paper. Try one more. Okay, so I still have this piece left, so let's do this one too. I'm gonna do this one, and then I'm gonna do it just black. But I'm not done with these. Wait. <laughs> so remember my plate face up, my shiny paper face up, my crease pad against it, and let's send it on through. You think it'll move if I bring it back? We'll find out. Oh my gosh, that's, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> and starting to come up. Foil plates on the wrong side. This is actually supposed to be the side you're supposed to use. I'm using the wrong side. I'm using what would be the back side of foil plates. I almost feel like I'm on the Jungle Cruise showing you the back side of water. Oh my gosh, but they're beautiful and they're easy. And you already have, you may already have luster wax to do it with. Okay, but then let's do, let's do this one. Plain, no, just plain paper. And I'm gonna run it this way in hopes that I don't get too much Too much wax transferred. Ooh, am I off? I am crooked. And let's do this one. No luster wax, just black paper. No Versamark, nothing special. Who would have thought a thud pad would be so important in your life? Okay, so now we have these two. 
I've got these three. And what if I took and went Hmm. Do we try it this way or do we try it that way? Again, this is the what would be the typical back side. This is the front side because now this is embossed up. Oh, hello, beautiful. You are absolutely gorgeous. I don't know. Which way do you like better? Good news is you don't have to choose. You can have it all. I sand this one just a little bit more. Save my hands. You can have it all. You don't have to choose. This is the back side. It's raised. If I do, let's do the other side just so you can see. You can always do both sides to see what you like better. Ha! So now this is debossed in as opposed to raised up. This is raised up where you can feel it. And that's that's the embossed side, the back side. Choices are plenty. Paper has two sides. Do both. Decide which one you like better. They're beautiful and they're easy. And then you can die cut them out. You don't have to keep them on here. Die cut it straight out and have the most beautiful, holy smokes, artichokes. Die cut it out and have the most beautiful, oh my gosh. They're stunning and they're easy to do. Let's do the copper one with the, oh. Okay, let's do the copper. Let's grab some copper. Rose gold, pardon me. Seahorse. okay. I think I pushed too hard. Let's try the front side. Seahorse is okay. I think I like the seahorse best. I think he comes out best like that, where you do the whole thing. I think he comes out better when you sand him. He is okay. 
I think it's better when you sand it. The bird, however, wow, the bird, you have options. <laughs> you decide. You've got many different ways to get that birdie done, and he's beautiful no matter how you do him. Love him. Love the seahorse this way, absolutely. So I told you there was a lot. I wasn't fibbing. I needed to start and then just go. There's no, there's no real rhyme or reason to the YouTubes. I just try to, to have it make sense. So let's go back. And remember, we started, we started with the piercing plate and the crease pad. And this is the top of the piercing plate. But if you turn it over, then you get to ink it and it really, really comes out phenomenal. It just shines if you just, if you just turn it over. All of a sudden you've taken a die, because that is a die, it's a piercing plate. But when you use it with that crease pad, it makes magic. Oh, that's a dark color. Too dark. All right, well, let's commit to the ink, shall we? Well, there's a difference between two, depending on what ink you use. But it didn't cut all the way through. We used the piercing plate for something different than it was intended to do. You've got the options. You decide what you like. It's all up to you. Then we moved into the seahorse. And we inked the seahorse first. And then we, we inked the plate. Remember, I just ink, ink, ink with a bunch of different inks. Send it through. And here's what we got. But then... We flipped him around and did the back side. So this and this are the same. This one I inked the seahorse before I rolled him through my die cutting machine. And this I inked it after I rolled it through. It's amazing the difference. I don't care for this at all. I'm in love with this. But then you turn it around and you use the back side. So technically, this and that would be front side, that look, back side, that look. Amazing, amazing, all done with a, a, a foil plate. Then, let's see, after that, where did we go? Uh, after that, we played with the micas. And the micas were beautiful. And we rolled it through. We inked up our plates with our Essentials glue pad. Essentials glue pad, super important. Not the same as a Versamark. And because it's a glue, you don't have to set the mica. Nope, all done, ready to go for you. Pretty, and then where's the, um? oh yeah. And then we did it, we inked up our we inked up our butterfly plate and sent it through with just ink, but then we inked it out, we glued it up and sent it through and then put our mica on the top. Uh-huh, uh-huh, sign me up for that one. And then we embossed, we put Versamark on our plate and we sent it through and we embossed with them. Right? Put our embossing powder down. Yes, you can. And if you didn't like that, you could go back through and you could ink this up. See, so let's say you did this one and you said, oh no, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Okay, well then you got the backside still to play with. And look at that. Nobody ever has to know if you didn't like the other side. I'm not gonna tell them. Are you gonna tell them? You're gonna say, hey, by the way, when you're done looking at this card, 
peel it off and you can see what I the part I didn't like? Heavens no. <laughs> Do you like the do you like the embossing powder? If not, okay, start again. <laughs> Talk about a mulligan moment. Oh my gosh. You have got options with all of this. It's beautiful. Then we went from the embossing into the stuff we just did, which was seriously holy smokes artichokes, making your own paper. Doesn't matter what color paper you use, the darker the paper, a dark blue, a dark green, a dark red, a dark gray, a dark brown, a dark purple, cover it up. I mean, you could do it with light, but I don't know that the light color is gonna come so well, but you can try. Cover it up with your luster wax, send it through the back side, and then sand it. He looks much better that way. Or, gosh, that's pretty. Or, on um, plain paper, send it through, and then come back and add your luster wax. You choose. I, I've done so many different things that maybe not all of them spoke to you. Maybe some of them talk to you more than others, but isn't it nice to know that if you wanted to, if you wanted to, you could do all of this. If you wanted to, all of this is available to you if you so chose. It's all there for you. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> so, wow. Okay, so what's on sale? Um, okay, so on the, on the stylish ovals, we have an I want it all. It's for the entire bundle. I did the best price I could it's $235 regularly. I did it for $159.99. That's the best I could do. What's in it? Everything that's in that collection. The foil bird that we used today. There is a layering mask that goes over the foil bird so you can layer, so you can uh, ink each and every part of them individually so he comes out perfect. We used this one today, it's in there. The ovals are in there. This is a beautiful floral set that is meant to go inside the oval. It fits perfectly. The piercing plate. Here again, a beautiful set of florals that is just meant to be lovely. Wait till you see the samples. I've got the, I've got the, the stamp set. And again, this is meant to go inside an oval as is this, the top and the bottom of an oval if you want, or just the top of the oval. I didn't use the beautiful 3D embossing folder, but I did use the glimmer plate today. It was all about the glimmer plate. So if you love just the embossing folder, it's on sale. If you love just the stamp set, it's on sale. If you love just the foiled birdie because you wanna do what I did, it's on sale or the entire collection is on sale at the deepest discount. Then we have my favorite. And again, it's by a little mom and pop shop. Her name is Dawn. It's, I think it's W, oh, Stacy, I can't. W plus nine is the name of the company. It retails for $128.95. I did it for as low as I could, $89.99. And this is a beautiful collection. One of the prettiest I've seen for a long time. Her, her seahorse is just magnificent. It's the one I used all day today and it comes with the greetings and the dies for the greetings. Then you've got all the little beautiful sea creatures that are not cartoony. They're sophisticated and they come with the dies. So you've got the foil plates to use and you've got the dies to cut them out. 
You've got sentiments thinking of you, starfish wishes and seahorse kisses. You are simply amazing. Again, foil, so you can do everything I did with them and then the dies to cut them out. There is an amazing 3D embossing folder of the net. Oh my gosh, you do this and then you cut the little ones out. Oh, beautiful. And then last but not least, a stamp and die set. So those are the two collections from Spellbinders that we have. Then I will do the, we have, I think, four sets. Today I use, today my favorite two sets are the number two is what I use today from Pearl X, and I used a lot of the metallic calligraphy set. They actually have, they have series one, series two, and series three, plus the calligraphy set. We'll put all of them on sale. I'm thinking most of you already have some of them or something very, very similar to it, like a perfect pearl, which will work just fine. We'll do the glue pad. We'll do the daubers, because you're gonna need them. We have to have the crease pad. You must have a crease pad, a thud pad to make this work. We'll throw in the sander. I guess we can do a verse. I don't have any. No, we won't do the verse mark because I don't have any embossing powder for you. <laughs> the luster waxes, absolutely. So tons of stuff for you to, to choose from. Beautiful products that make beautiful, beautiful samples and cards and layouts and mixed medias and altered art and journal, junk journals, and a little bit of everything for everybody. Let me show you samples. So everything I did is nothing that they expected. <laughs> I always get this from a manufacturer. What, what, what do you plan to do with our stuff? Well, you're gonna have to wait until everybody else sees. So I need a... Um, this will come off my craft mat. It would be easier if I had a, hello you. It'd be easier if I had a Mr. Oh, see, hello. <laughs> what Mr. Clean puts in his magic sponge, I don't know, but it makes my heart happy. <laughs> Love my Mr. Clean. <laughs> okay. So samples, now that my board is a little cleaner, my craft mat. Hello, beautiful, right? Yay. Get well soon. I love this collection. Starfish wishes and seahorse kisses. See, used as a used as a glimmer. It's beautiful as a foil plate, but it's equally as beautiful as all the other ways that I showed you how to use it. There's the stamp that comes in the, the ovals set. Here's the piercing plate fully done. And of course you can cut out each individual element of the piercing plate and they cut out the center and didn't use it. And then you've got the foiled butterflies. I happen to like my butterflies as well because here they're just a solid color. Mine, <laughs> wait, 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 where'd it go? Mine, I love that. And if you cut them out individually, could have done the exact same thing. <laughs> okay, oh, wait, 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 next one. Here is that beautiful stitched, look at the stitching on all of those flowers. That's all part of the ovals. It's, style, it's in the Stylish Ovals collection. Isn't that pretty? And then another seahorse with the 3D embossing folder in the back. And then I have these. 
Here's our bird and the uh, the mat or the stencils. I want to say there's six stencils that allow you to color the bird in and all the individual pieces exactly the way you want. And the seahorse. And how pretty is this, the watercolor? This is the same one I used to do that. Totally different looks. Same product. Same plate. So pretty. And here, I inked my butterflies. That's just ink. That's this. And then we cut it out into a semicircle and finished it with the colors of the butterflies. Just ink, nothing more. Here we've got the seahorse. And that stylish florals, that beautiful flower that fits right in that oval. Everything is meant to coordinate in the stylish uh, Yes, the stylish ovals. Those ovals are meant to go with all the coordinating product. The nested sets are meant to be used with all the coordinating product. Oh, look at how pretty is this. There you have the piercing plate completely done. Isn't that beautiful? Ah! And then we have our glimmer of our underwater, grown up, sophisticated sea life. And then here, again, all done in glimmer. So, I'm hoping you found what I did was taking something and and making it more than making it more than maybe what the manufacturer originally thought it could be by just utilizing some simple tools a thud a crease pad some waxes some inks some glue some mica and transforming them into something new Hi, everybody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hope you had a good time today. I hope that you learned something that you didn't know before. I hope your eyes were opened to new possibilities of things you may already have in your crafty stash. Maybe you have some of my older foil plates. Um, let's play, right? So where are you going to find all of this? Well, a lot of it you can find at your independent local store. If you have an independent mom and pop shop, go visit them first. <laughs> and then if you can't, come online to Scrapbooking Made Simple. It will all be under our YouTube Yummies category. That is where you will find this product. And, and I've marked it as low as I possibly can to keep crafting affordable. And I hope that this class really spoke to you. If not, if not on everything, that there was this one <gasps> aha moment. And if you have one takeaway like that, then it was so worth every moment spending it with you. That makes my heart so happy. All right, you guys, it's me, Stacy. Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. The next time I see you will be Monday for our Make It Monday event where we have product between 80 and $100, sometimes more than $100, on sale of one bundle for $19.99. That is Monday at 5 p.m. Sunday California time, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. But until then, have yourselves a wonderful weekend, and thank you so much for letting me be part of, of your lives, Let me letting me play and, and craft right along with you. It means the world to me. All right, you guys, I'll see you later. Bye.